Hey everyone and welcome back to another conversion video. This time around I'll be showing you how to convert not one but two miniatures. These naval admirals each sit either side of the forces of the Imperium and the forces of chaos and so offer us different aspects of the same role. And as always I'll be guiding you through the steps that I took to build these two miniatures. Now, you may be wondering why I've chosen this particular conversion, but that should all be cleared up as I give a quick shout out to the sponsors of this video, World of Warships. World of Warships is the free-to-play ship-based combat game that sees, no pun intended, two opposing teams of players fighting it out in a game of strategy and skill. Brought to you by the makers of World of Tanks and World of Warplanes, World of Warships allows you to take control of one of the 350 plus highly detailed and historically accurate ships found in the game, which are spread out across five different classes and ten nations. Now you're probably wondering why I'm talking about a World War II game in a video about Warhammer 40k. Well, World of Warships have teamed up with Games Workshop to add Chaos Space Marine and Imperium inspired commanders, patches, flags and camos to the game, as well as rolling out two 40k themed battleships and combat missions. But World of Warships isn't just for PC players. World of Warships Legends allows you to hit the high seas from your console with specially adapted controls and UI, providing a smooth, comfortable and dynamic experience. World of Warships Legends also offers great graphics and grandiose soundscapes to carry you away to the seas for a tactical session or a good old naval brawl. Check out the description below for codes and links that will give new players some extra bonuses to hit the ground running with. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's start the conversion. We have two Commissar Sprues here, which will be serving as the basis for both of our Admirals. This is partly because they're already fairly naval looking, and it's also because I already have two of these left over from my many, many Astra Militarum Star collecting boxes that still remain unassembled. Also, it will be interesting to see how differently the results look, even though they're basically the same base kit. So let's begin by removing all the components from the sprues and cleaning those up. You can ignore the heads and caps though as we'll not be needing them for these conversions. So first of all we're going to be tackling our Loyalist Admiral and nothing says nautical more than a peg leg. So grab yourself some clippers and start by giving your miniature a battlefield amputation just above the right boot. With that cut made, we need a knee joint to fix our peg too, and this is being sourced from the Skatari Vanguard kit. Take one of the left radium carbine arms from the kit and begin by cutting it just above the elbow. If your arm has a cable like this here, try to keep it attached to the elbow. You will then need to cut away the forearm from the elbow so you're left with a piece that looks like this. Now we need to make sure that we can actually attach the new knee to the upper leg of the Admiral. So compare the piece against the leg, keeping the rounded joint facing downwards. And this should give you a rough idea where you need to trim and file in order to get the two parts fitting together. Keep on making small adjustments and comparing the joint. This will help to ensure that you have a good fit and you don't cut away too much in one go. Once you're happy that everything is lining up properly, go ahead and glue the robotic knee to the bottom of the leg. Unless our Admiral is operating some sort of hover peg leg, and let's face it, this is the 41st millennium, he's going to need an actual peg leg, and this will be provided to us by the Skatari Rangers Arquebus Pole. But first, we need to actually work out how long it needs to be. So, go ahead and glue your Admiral's leg to the small rocky outcrop, and then glue this to the base. You can then compare the rod against the distance between the knee and the bottom of the base, which should give you a guide on where to make your cuts. Cut to length with clippers, smooth out the cuts with a knife or a file, before finally gluing the peg into place. Next up, we need to swap out the arm that we currently have for a last gun wielding one from the Baneblade Tank Commander. You can use one from the Cadian Command Kit too, but you might need to remove the shoulder pad from it. Anyway, to get this arm to fit, we are going to need to cut away the existing right arm as well as the epaulet. So start things off with some clippers and use those to remove most of the arm before trimming the remaining parts back with a knife or a file. Keep the chain intact though, as we will need this later. Again, bring in your arm to test the fit and make the adjustments as necessary. Before we can assemble the torso, we need to cut away the pipe from the back of the coat. 
This originally would lead to the arm that we just cut away, so this will need to be removed first. With this done, you can then glue the front and back of the torso together before attaching the arm as well. Remember the chain we left intact earlier? Well, that can be very carefully bent around to reach the new weapon grip and then glued into place. Next up, we need to add a head, and the one I've chosen here has been taken from the Cadian Command Squad kit, which I decided to use because of its suitably stoic expression. The original parts of the Commissaire's head will need to be cut away first and bring back the clippers and the knife and then trim away until you have a flat area. Flatten out the bottom of the new head by removing its ball joint before gluing the head in place. You'll notice that I've chosen to have the head facing left, which helps to alter the flow of the model from its original direction and further helps to separate it from the base kit. Finally, we just need to add the left arm and with this, I wanted to continue the theme of bionics across the model and so decided to use another arm from the Skatari kit. This pointed arm fits in nicely with the pose that we've chosen and doesn't need any adjustments to fit. And with that, our Admiral is completed. But before we begin the painting, let's build our Traitor Admiral first. So, much like our Loyalist Admiral, for our Chaos Admiral, we want to go ahead and make the same cuts to the torso. This involves removing the right arm and the epaulets with some clippers before removing the power cable leading from the back. In addition to this, I have also removed the chain leading from the lapel, but have kept the skull icon in place. This time around, the arms I'll be using are a little more hench. It seems that turning your loyalties to the Chaos Gods results in some excellent gains. These arms are taken from the Katachan Command Squad kit and feature both saber wielding and pointing arms, the latter of which I can use to mirror the pose of our Loyalist Admiral. Attaching these arms will probably require a little trimming first, so line up the arms with the torso, see where those adjustments need to be made, and then make a start on the cutting and filing to ensure that the arms have a good fit. Once you're happy, the arms can be glued into place. If you've watched a few of my videos already, then you know that a handy way to show something is Chaos Affiliated is to just slap a bit of chain to it, like this one I just happen to have here. I'll be wrapping this around the wrist of our heretic, but first we need to add a small dot of superglue to the top of the pointing wrist. Then we can lay one end of the chain into the glue, whilst keeping a small amount of overhang below the wrist. After allowing this a few moments to dry, pull the chain tight around the wrist a couple of times and cut to length with some clippers. At the moment, the chain will still be quite loose, so add a bit more superglue to fix everything into place and make your painting experience much, much easier. So while the chain is helping with the Chaos look, he still just looks like a commissar of a biker gang, so to resolve this, we can add some spikes as well. The spikes I'm using here are from another favourite kit of mine, Necromunda's House Corridor. I grabbed the large crossbow component from that kit and will be using some of the clippers to carefully remove the railway spike shards from the end. A mixture of heads and bottoms is recommended and about four of these should work. Once you've clipped them away, clean up the end where you made the cut using a knife or a file to ensure you have a flat surface that will let you get a much stronger bond when you come to glue them onto the bare shoulders of your heretical admiral. With the arms in place, the only thing left to do is to add the head. I've chosen this rather handsome chap from the flagellant set. The bald head, scarred face, missing teeth and snarling expression really lend themselves perfectly to a servant of chaos. However, to glue this head to the body, we once again need to clip and trim down the existing neck until we have a flat surface. Similarly, the bottom of the neck will also need to be trimmed or filed down slightly to ensure that we have a good fit against the torso when you're ready to glue it. To help add a little variety, I decided to trim away the small tab beneath the left foot and forgo the rubble pile. Instead, I've opted to glue the legs to the base before inserting a half skull from the Citadel skull set beneath the foot. This should fit nicely and shouldn't require any additional trimming or adjustments. With that done, you can glue on the torso and set about painting both of your admirals in colour schemes that suitably represent their factions, which should leave you with something that looks a bit like this. 
So hopefully after watching this video you have learned a few tips to create some admirals that could easily be proxied for commanders of your Astra Militarum and Traitor Guard forces, or you could use them as interesting objectives for your games of 40k. Now I just want to say a big thank you to World of Warships once again for sponsoring this video and honestly I do play the game myself and it's just a fun game to very quickly drop into when you just have a few minutes free. So as I mentioned check out the sign up link and the new player codes found in the description. Be sure to check out my Discord as well, there are lots of great people on there and the link to that is also in the description. So the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.